right, let's find out what's going on in another gold and silver producing region of the world. Mexico, my guest, chief executive of Gammon Gold, uh, Rene Marion. Yes, I got, got it. it. I know. I just, you know, sometimes <laughs> my mind just goes to mush in these events. Rene, explain what's happening in, in the operations uh, in, in Mexico right now, because that is an area where you're putting a lot, really, all the intensive resources. Yeah, well, we've, uh, you know, the current management team started a couple of years ago. Uh, we commissioned one of the largest uh, gold silver mines in Mexico in 2007, had operational problems. And our management team came in and basically developed a plan, executed on the plan, invested $120 million self-funded into Mexico, are uh, currently ramping up production significantly this year, all at the same time reducing our cash costs by about some 56%. And improving our margins. What now. Were the, just to step back, Renee, what, yeah. what were the problems there that you that you encountered when you first went in? Start, startup problems are not uncommon. In fact, most mines uh, do have teething problems at the beginning. It was an undercapitalized company that uh, had maintenance problems. And uh, how do you resolve maintenance problems? People. So we focused on people and maintenance for the first year, and then developed an expansionary program going forward. And really, that's what that 120 million dollars was. And uh, where we sit today is we're getting the benefit of it at an $1,100 gold, you know, and our costs are continuing to decrease. What, what are the costs of production, getting the gold out of the ground right Last now? Last year we averaged $420 an ounce. Uh, we anticipate getting below $400 this year. And, uh, you know, we do all our planning at low metal prices so that we always have a, a good margin. And uh, focusing on using a lot of that money to reinvest into exploration in Mexico and uh, moving the company forward to continue that growth profile. Do you think you'll be buying up some more assets in Mexico? Uh, we're always looking, always looking. Uh, always prospecting. Yeah, huh? you, you start wondering at $1,100 is the right time, but the reality is it's always the right time. Well, well you know, miners typically are pretty conservative people once they actually are in business, right? I mean, they're very yeah. leery about believing that maybe $1,100 an ounce is a base price for gold. Well, it's new for all of us, to say the least. We're all bullish. We all think the fundamentals are there for it to keep on going up. But, there, you know, the reality is, is, you know, it's a tough resource. You know, you, you can't find it anymore in the world. And, you know, you take a look, production globally is going down. The replacement of mining depletion is, is going down. Um, so, yeah, you've got to look in places that's pretty strange and be aggressive about it. So, uh, you know. We're there, and uh, we're not only looking at Mexico, our horizons North America. So, uh, you know, we want to be one of the companies that uh, grows into uh, the next decade. When I talk about silver, we haven't really been yeah. able to mention that because it's been such a gold-intensive conference. Everyone's so interested in gold, gold prices, but you, you've got to also leverage yourself to what's happening in the silver market. That's right. Unlike many uh, precious metal companies, we only produce gold and silver. We don't have any copper or anything like that. Uh, this year, our, you know, our silver production is going to be somewhere between six and nine million ounces. Okay, we're just finishing up our uh, plants. It's fairly substantial. One of the largest silver producers in the world, in fact, and because uh, there aren't very many uh, silver producers, really. Uh, we're pretty excited about it because where we are right now is historically the gold price divided by the silver price is historically running about 55 to 55 uh, to 1. Currently, we're sitting at 67 to 1, so I anticipate seeing a pretty strong rebound in silver prices because at $1,100 gold, you should be looking at over $20 silver. And why, do you, why do you think it, that discrepancy exists, that historical uh, difference? Um, it's a, it's, it's a little different. There's a lot of industrial use for silver, but even having said that, there's always been a historical ratio, just like oil to gold. Right, but why is it out of whack right now? It's out of whack because I think uh, you're, you're starting to see um, uh, a strange dichotomy. Everybody's trying to view it as a, as a kind of an industrial uh, mineral right now, although it really isn't. Let's call it the poor man's gold. So uh, I think with when you see copper production dropping down, a lot of copper comes with silver, so you're starting to see silver global production coming down. So I think you'll see it, uh, you know, get locked back in. You get a lot of funny things going with gold as well because you've got the the U.S. exchange rate, and uh, that's manipulating the uh, the price of gold. Quite what, a bit. what do you mean by that? Because the U.S. dollar has gotten so much stronger against some of its trading partners. Well, what? what happens is that the U.S. Uh, dollar gets weaker, gold price takes takes off, off because every, you know the main consumers in the world on gold are not in the states. Uh, silver, on the other hand. Um, 
you know, it is primarily industrialized countries that are, are that are using it, right? You know, Japan, Canada, uh, to a large degree. So it's not nearly as tied into the U.S. dollar currently. And I do believe in the future you're going to see that recalibration coming in. For us, it's free money. Right? All right. So. Well, we're going to have to check in with you later on to make sure how much of that free money you're all making. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Well, thank Renee you very Marianne much. Coming in from Gammon Agolda, sharing your insights with us.